When it comes to soybean fertility, my question for you is, what are you doing? How are you fertilizing your soybeans? Darren has some statistics for us here. When we talk about 80 bushel beans, and I realize you might not be raising 80, but if you're raising 40, just divide these numbers by two. But I'll tell you what, your number probably will be 80 and not too long. Maybe it's five years, maybe it's 10 years from now, whatever. But eventually, we're going to get to 80 bushel soybeans. Well, there are certainly parts of your field right now that are yielding 80. If yeah, you're getting point. a 40 bushel average, you've got some hot spots out there that are doing really well. Uh, the way that you can figure these numbers is just pull up the Ag PhD fertilizer removal app on your phone or tablet. It's a free download. Uh, you can type in the crop that you want, like soybeans, for example. Then you can put in whatever yield number you want. So we're going to use 80 today. So uh, if you want to type in 80, you can just follow right along. All right, so let's hit these numbers. Go ahead. All right, so for nitrogen, 80 bushel soybeans need 348 total pounds of nitrogen. And 75% of that, 260 pounds, is going to be removed when you haul the grain out of the field. Uh, for phosphorus, well, soybeans need 78 pounds of phosphate, and 59 of that is going to be removed when you haul the grain out of the field. That's 75% again. Now, with K2O potassium, we need 176 pounds to raise 80 bushel soybeans and 96 pounds are going to leave in the fall with the crop. That's 55% there. Sulfur, we need 28 pounds. Calcium, we need 76 pounds. And magnesium, 40 pounds. That's a whole lot of nutrients we need for 80 bushel soybeans. So here's the whole point, and the reason why we're talking about this today. When you put your corn crop in the ground this spring, I'm going to assume you put something on for fertilizer. Okay, you don't just throw your corn crop out there and say, well, this is a good scavenger crop and we just hope that it can pull enough out of the soil to produce 200 or 250 bushel corn. No way. How well are you treating your corn crop? And we just want you to think about, you know what, even if I try just a few acres, maybe I should treat my soybean crop that well. Fertility is the key thing. I don't care which crop we're talking about. Yes, it's important to control weeds and diseases and insects. It's important to place your seed right and all these things, have good drainage, you name it. But probably 80% of the conversation should be, what are my nutrient needs? It's just like anything else. I don't care if you have livestock or if you're raising a child, you have to feed everything well if you want it to do well long term. All right, so here's one thing a little different with soybeans though compared to a crop like corn. For corn, it needs fertility a little bit all through the season. Now, certainly that ramps up as the plant gets bigger and as we start uh, producing and filling out that ear. With soybeans, we don't need a whole lot of nutrients early. We need some, we certainly need some. But once we get to that reproductive phase, your crop's gonna try and take in a whole bunch of nutrients all at once. So we need to make sure we've got available nutrients out there for the crop and available late in the season. So I remember my, growing up, my dad would always say, well, if we're gonna spread dry fertilizer in the fall, uh, it's gonna take some moisture to break that down. And by summer, it's gonna be ready for those soybeans. So if you're putting out a lot of orthophosphates rather than polyphosphates early, the ortho is available right now and it also could be tied up a little bit quicker than the poly. So it may be something where you want to spread that phosphorus load out just a little bit between the two different types or just put more of that phosphorus on later in the season. One other thing that is a lot different from soybeans compared to corn is how much potassium gets pulled up on a per day basis at the peak. So even if we compare 300 bushel corn to 80 bushel beans, it's going to take so much more potassium on a per day basis, probably at least twice as much. So here's, here's my whole point. If you don't have lots of potassium very readily available in that soil when your peak demand comes in the middle of the summer, you're just not going to raise phenomenal soybeans. Even for ourselves, last year we raised some 95 bushel soybeans in some of our high yield area. And you know what? We were doing plant tissue analysis. We still ran short of potassium. Late in the season, you've got to have ample K, or a mid to late season, I should say. So potassium is probably the number one thing that I always think about. Sure, you've got to have really good phosphorus levels too, but potassium, it takes a crazy amount of potassium if you want tremendously high yielding soybeans. Here's the other thing, and I started with this point. Soybeans are going to remove 75% of the phosphate they take up and 55% of the K2O potassium they take up out of the soil. Now, yes, that means they are leaving some behind, 
but they're taking away most of what they're pulling out of the soil. So don't think, oh, we're gonna get by, uh, you know, without fertility or with not that terrible much fertility. No, we gotta put quite a bit because corn does the same thing. It's removing a huge percentage of nutrients when you haul that grain away in the fall. So make sure you're fertilizing soybeans, treating them like your first crop if you wanna get first crop kind of yields. One other thing I guess I would say, because a lot of people say, oh, I don't know if I should fertilize my soybeans. Okay, here's worst case scenario, like with P and K. P and K aren't leaving your field, I mean, unless you have soil erosion. They're gonna stay there until they get used up. So what's wrong with putting some extra P and K out there? I mean, sure, as long as you're not getting too carried away. All I'm getting at here is you say, okay, worst case scenario, I put a little too much P and K on for my soybean crop. Well, it will surely get used next year with your corn crop or two years later with your soybean crop again or something like that. So just make sure you have ample fertility and also keep in mind, sulfur and micronutrients get pulled up by soybeans as well. So take a look at everything you've got for fertility on your farm if you want great soybeans. The other thing you'll need to do to raise top yields is control our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? <laughs>